Omegle is dead. So, if you've been on the internet in the past few days, Omegle is dead. Gone kaput. For those who don't know, Omegle was a web-based chat service that allows you to connect to strangers from anywhere in the world. But, it's best known for being the place where you can watch a stranger jerk off. If you go to Omegle's page now, all that pops up is an essay from the creator. And I'm not going to read all this, but I'll summarize. So basically, he talks about the creation of Omegle and how it was made. So he could interact with people through the internet, pretty basic stuff. But then he starts talking about how much good happens on Omegle, like people meeting on Omegle and getting married. Who the fuck is meeting on Omegle and getting married? Anyways, he then goes on to talk about how, with all highs, there must be lows. And in my opinion, I think there are a lot more lows than highs for this service. Like, yeah, you could meet a stranger and talk about moral philosophy, but 9 out of 10 times, you're gonna match the dude jerking off. And the worst part is, a huge amount of the user base is underage. How do I know this? Because when I was a wee lad, I was using Omegle. And so were all my friends at the time. And in fact, the reason Omegle is finally shutting down, at least according to Vogue, is the result of a lawsuit where an 11-year-old victim of a 30-year-old predator was groomed and forced to send explicit photos over a three-year period. The permanent shutdown of Omegle, in quotations, was a term negotiated between Omegle and our client in exchange for Omegle getting to avoid the impending jury trial verdict. That and in 2022, there were an estimated 600,000 plus reports of child exploitation on Omegle to the nonprofit National Center for Missing and Exploited Children's Cyber Tip Line. Of all the sites the center tracked, only Facebook, Google, Instagram, and WhatsApp ranked higher. So yeah, there's a lot of kids on Omegle and a huge amount of predators on Omegle too. At least there were. Then he says something about freedom and how he and his team tried to moderate Omegle while also keeping the anonymity around. And how, as of recent years, people have been really ornery, or bad-tempered and combative, and how your freedoms are being attacked. Ultimately, the victim is you, and your freedoms, yada yada. I'm going to go on note here and say, this is not the reason it's getting attacked, and more of a poorly written defense. The reason the app is being attacked, or shut down, as is stated, is because Omegle makes it really easy to diddle kids. It's that simple. The app was made in a way that a predator could easily find a victim, and the anonymity made it simple enough to get away with the crime. A service that randomly allows you to video chat people from anywhere in the world is a cool idea, but it is also an idea that's easily abusable. So my take on this is pretty much the same as everyone else's. Parents need to pay more attention to what their children are doing on the internet. A large portion of the blame falls on the parents in these cases of internet abuse. But honestly, I feel like most of this essay or whatnot is really misrepresentative of the actual reason they kept getting sued and attacked. The creator of Omegle seems to be either in denial or actively dodging the topic. You made Omegle for freedom and expression, but ultimately it didn't stay as a website where you can talk about moral philosophy. It became a site more akin to chat roulette for pedophiles. Omegle did more bad than good, but there are people that used it normally. Some YouTubers even having whole channels based on Omegle like the Omegle prank channels. A lot of old YouTubers also used Omegle in its golden age for meeting fans and content creation. So Omegle did do some good. The problem is, it aged like milk and slowly became more and more corrupt over the years as the site declined in popularity. I added this part because I felt like the video was too much Omegle only did bad, but it did do some good stuff. I think it was like 60-40. 60 being bad and 40 being good. Now, I'm going to end this off with an unscripted take. I think that Omegle shutting down is a mixed bag. A lot of channels are going to shut down. A lot of channels are probably going to have a hard time finding content uh, if they did Omegle content. So that's one bad thing. And obviously Omegle lasted for a while and it, it had an interesting history. But I'm also not that sad because obviously it was being abused in a way that was negative for a lot of people. Um, 600,000 cases of child abuse is fucking nuts, especially for a site that is not even really comparable to like Google and Instagram. I don't think Omegle was being used to the same capacity as Google or Instagram, but the fact that it was even near the list of those is pretty nuts. I do think it's a good thing that it did shut down because it was obviously being abused. 
Uh, that's about it. Oh, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya.